this conference, so that means all the preparation and practice gets put to the test here tonight. Game one of a back-to-back -back is about to get underway with Hawaii and Cal State Fortin ready to go on ESPN. Losers of three straight, Hawaii returns to a place they treat just like home. The Titans, on the other hand, are looking to get out of the shadows of these Rainbow Warriors by creating an identity that could propel them to higher places when the calendar turns to March. Inside Titan Gym with Bill Horenda, I'm David Gascon. Thanks for joining us tonight. We're moving at warp speed, Bill, in order to pack as many games in as possible prior to the conference tournament beginning. So that means these offenses need to start off strong. You're absolutely right, David. Both squads talented, skilled, and deep. However, trying to find it, what better time than a back-to-back -back here in Fullerton? Speaking of finding it, let's take a look at one of the Rainbow Warriors that you've loved all season long. James Jean Marie leading the conference in field goal percentage, combining field goal, three-point field goal, free throw percentage. He's shooting an astounding... 191%. However, during the losing streak, he has an eclipse 10 field goals per game. Expect that to change tonight. And for Vincent Lee on Fullerton squad, of course, he doesn't want anything to change. Coming off a career-high 25 in a win against CSUN, the double-double in the overtime win against Long Beach State. It's that type of production the Titans need to start the weekend right. Lots of things at stake here tonight. Hawaii obviously trying to snap a three-game losing streak as we take a peek at the Big West Conference standings right now. Bill, you look at the top, you look at the bottom, still plenty of time left for both these squads to make a move. Oh, there's no question about that. The mercurial fickle Big West, Dave. You got to bring it every night. And speaking of all that, let's sit down to the third member of our crew, Courtney Sweet. Take it away, Courtney. Well, guys, in their last two conference series, the Titans have lost the first game and won the second. I spoke with Coach Taylor about their approach to this year's back-to-back -back series and conference. And he said, we try to approach it one game at a time, but he notices that his team doesn't come out with as much of an edge on the first night because they know they're going to play the same team the very next night. He said, we've got to get off to a better start here tonight. So what is he looking for? He wants his team to bring more energy. He definitely needs them to get into the paint. He says, good things happen when we get into the paint. He wants them to share the basketball and do better with defense, play harder on defense. So as you look at the stat sheet, guys, keep an eye on those few things. David. Courtney, thank you very much. And to Courtney's point on all of that, Bill, I guess there's no magic potion, but how do you play better defense? Well, you've got to want it. And, of course, Coach Taylor and his staff, they're inculcating this into the team. But, of course, David, you've got eight newcomers. Takes a little bit of time, but the time is right, according to their perspective, of course, to bring it immediately tonight. Starts at 5 o'clock, not 7 o'clock, at 5. I'm sure he reminded them. Uh, and of course, when you look at situations like this, too, Bill, it, it is unique. I mean, these guys have not played for, for nearly a week. So how do you play with that go, stop, go, stop kind of mentality especially when you have a long time to think about whether you won or lost in the previous game. Well, it's a test of maturity. And again, it's like anything else, Dave. It's all about the next play. You've got to bring it on a consistent basis. You've got a formidable opponent, of course, here in Hawaii. They have a host of newcomers as well. So uh, these are definitely different times, unprecedented, and challenges abounding for players, for coaching staffs alike. You see both of the head coaches, Iran Ganat. Enjoying some time with the uh, University of Hawaii, spending six years with the program, 89 victories and 59 defeats. Opening tip-off is controlled by the home team. This thing is officially underway. Cal State Fortin on your screen. Their white dominant uniforms going from right to left. Hawaii going from left to right underneath feed. And just like that, Cal State Fortin with an early touch underneath. That shot no good by Vincent Lee and back come the Rainbow Warriors. Just as Courtney alluded to, paint touches a great look early. You can live with that. Of course, you're happy with that. You expect to convert many more of those as the game evolves. Well, Wally Bayless with the first touch tonight for him. Let's start the last game. He's appeared in six of them so far. A couple of them was the start. That pass is nearly intercepted and picked off, but Hawaii maintaining possession. Six to go in the shot clock. First attempt underway by Webster's off the mark. No good. And Cal State Fullerton with the clear. Titans so far this season have not had a lot of work. Three and four this season, but that shot attempt is good from downtown. And Cal State Fortin leading by Trey Maddox up 3-0. Of course, he toiled under Greg Campy at Oakland. We all know Kendrick Nunn with the Miami Heat. Great program there and a great find for Fullerton to have Maddox wearing number two. Maddox 
averaging just under 14 points a game this season. That shot tapped by Jean Marie is good. First points of the ball game for James Jean Marie. It's 3 2 Titans. Jean Marie learning to score in all thirds at the basket there in the mid range, can also shoot the three. Hawaii 3-3 three three this season, 1-3 in conference play. Last season, a little bit different of a note for them. Underneath again for Lee. And so far, the first two or three possessions for Cal State Fullerton, Bill, they've gone right to their big man. And he's playing well, as we said in the open, David, right? Here's a guy coming off a career-high 25 and a win over CSUN, the double-double against Long Beach State. So from that standpoint, he is being rewarded his maturity, a redshirt sophomore. And again, just like Courtney said, you get those paint touches, guess what? If you get the spacing that Coach Taylor is trying to emphasize, you're going to get good perimeter looks, but attack the basket first. It fouls on Josh Hall, his first underneath pass to Webster. Nothing doing with it just yet. Let's see the separation right now with Hawaii. Spin move, Jean Marie is nice. Rotation a little bit slow, and Jean Marie to the delectation of the Rainbow Warriors fans, flushing it. Lee, again, with the drop step, he has cut off good defense there by Jean Marie outside with 15 to go on the shot clock. Another three pointer on the way by Trey Maddox is good. He's two for two from downtown, shooting 35% from long range, and Cal State forward to the four point lead. Another point of emphasis, a good start. This is an auspicious one for Fullerton. You've got Maddox and Lee leading the way. Underneath, Jardine thought he was fouled in the act of shooting, no good. Officials aren't going to help him out. Back comes Maddox, he's got two threes so far. Quick six points for Cal State Fullerton. Titans have been up and down this season. Lee, again to the baseline, right-handed. Get a little shooter's touch right there, Bill. And it's good for two, six-point lead. Lee with the great patience in the post. That's a term you don't hear very often, David but he surveys, feels the contact, absorbs it, soft touch, extremely well done. Very intelligent play by Lee. There were times last week where the Titans were relatively flat offensively against CSUN. They went through a couple of droughts early on in each half. Not the case here tonight. Seven to go on the shot clock. Ball circling all the way around. Three point on the way is no good. Jardine underneath, offensive rebound, put back. No, there's Vincent Lee again. And great help defense, kind of a zone look there. San Antonio with the great contest. And the defensive possession is finished with the defensive rebound by the Titans. Hall to San Antonio. San Antonio hasn't taken a shot just yet. Game is only a couple minutes old. In fact, it was nearing 16 minutes to play in this first half. Hall, corner three, got it. Cal State Fullerton shooting 35% from long range. But don't tell them that just yet. They're just lighting things up from downtown, and they have a nine-point lead. Paul, one of seven from downtown coming into tonight, but you'd never know it. Sometimes that scouting report, David, can be a little deceptive. Speaking of that, Bayless underneath. No English on that one. And back comes Josh Hall. No numbers, though, for Cal State Fullerton. Baseline, San Antonio, he's cut off. Outside by right cell for three, way short on that one. That'll be a team rebound for the University of Hawaii. Media timeout on the court with 15.39 to play here in this first half. Cal State Fullerton strong early on. They lead 13-4. We'll be back. For success is to shoot the ball well, no matter where you are on the court. And Cal State Fullerton doing just that. 13-4 is the score. David Gascon, Bill Horenda, and Courtney Sweet with us. And Bill, I guess right on that note, Titans early on, three or four from long range. Yes, so, you know, look, for the Titans, you want to get off to a good start, which they have done. And then also transition defense is critical. And you don't want Hawaii to find their offensive flow. Now, Bakersfield took it away last weekend in that sweep. And again, rebounding a key for Hawaii. They have won 85% of their games under Gannat when they out-rebound their opponents. That should get their attention. Troubling it as it is for Hawaii right now, Cal State University of Bakersfield really disrupted them last week. They went on a 20-2 run in the first half of that second game in the back-to-back -back, and then shot a blistering 52% in the second half to pull away. And that's why they swept those two games in Honolulu. So here's Hawaii right now looking for a response. Jean Marie from the elbow, no good. And back comes Cal State Fullerton. Right cell. Looking for the screen going the opposite way, though. A nice stop and go action. This is that bunny jump shot. Jean Marie, though, with the defensive rebound. 
Johnny Wang in the ball game for the first time today for Cal State Fullerton. Corner three on the way is true by Justin Webster. For the first time tonight, he's averaging nearly 12 points a game here in 2021. Webster's dad played at Oklahoma, second round pick by the Miami Heat back in 94. Like father, like son here, David, early. Give me shades of Ronnie Cycli back in the day, Bill. <laughs> there you go. Here's Wang from Beijing, outside corner pass. Trey Maddox again, not this time. He's now two or three from deep. One shot and out, and here comes Hawaii. Hawaii last season finished the year 17 and 13 overall, 8 and 8 in conference play. They're in the middle of the pack. The one thing that they have done well, not just last year, but in years past, is they have dominated the Titans here at Titan Gym. They've won five straight. Another corner three. This one on the way is another deep range shot. This one by Justin Webster yet again. Webster with great poise and Hawaii as a team with great poise. Under five seconds on the shot clock. Good ball movement. Ball moves through multiple quadrants on the floor. The defense has to react and Webster capitalizes. But very well done. Good possession. Speaking of there's the spacing right now. Landis Spivey with a nearly poor pass. He gets it back though. Right cell. Some head fake movement. Dante Maddox Jr. for the first time today, working his way around some traffic. Errant pass is picked up. No numbers, though, for the Rainbow Warriors, but they're pushing the ball anyway. That shot attempt by Bayless is no good. And the reason why he was fouled in the act of shooting, he'll get two free throws. And hey, David, worthy of note, we're talking about both teams trying to find it. Eight newcomers for Fullerton. And how about Hawaii? The notable losses. Drew Bugs transfers to Missouri, all-time assist leader. Samuda Avea opts out. Dawson Carper, Owen Holland, Eddie Stansberry, Rymo. So there's a lot to replace here, but still a talented roster. Very deep are the Rainbow Warriors. Yeah, and on the other side for Cal State Fullerton, keep in mind they lost Jackson Rowe, Brandon Kamga, who were all Big West Conference players a season ago. Second team members, that is. Well, you're right, David. Terrific players. Maddox Jr. with a sweet reverse. Dante Maddox Jr. is averaging about eight points a game this season. Good look for him right there. The youngster just getting acclimated to the collegiate game. Great move. McClanahan with that two-pointer. Talk about mid-range. That one's a little bit deeper than that. Pockets at home, though. 15-12, Cal State Fullerton. Now, Hawaii has responded well here after the media break and the slow start. Fullerton, of course, would like to replicate getting stops at the defensive end. Harris weaving, bobbing, no with his left hand. Missing and back comes Hawaii. Planhan, left wing for three. Jardine short on that, not enough leg on it. And here is Harris. Harris looking to push. Good transition defense, though, so far from Hawaii. Maddox Jr., though, that one not good. Front and back iron. And here comes Cal State Fullerton. Play a little bit more defense right now than we've seen over the recent weeks. It's been an area of concern for Diedrich Taylor. Energy, communication, and cohesiveness. And both teams do look more poised than they have, and that's a credit to the coaching staff. Jardine brought the ball down. That's a no-no. It'll be a jump ball. Possession stays with the road team. Last season, you mentioned Drew Bugs. He poured in 20 points for Hawaii. They were also 22 of 27 at the charity stripe compared to Cal State Fullerton, who was just 13 of 22, winning that last game of the season, 70 to 59. They've won five straight here. What does Cal State Fullerton need to do to turn that tide, Bill? I think it starts on the defensive end. David getting stops and then getting the ball into the paint. With five to go on the shot clock, a tough acrobatic shot from long range. There's Justin Webster again. Okay, Webster is incendiary, okay? You've got to guard him and know what kind of cologne he's wearing, okay? That's the question I'm going to ask at the next media break if I'm Dietrich Taylor. They must stay connected to him. Three of four from deep. He's matching Trey Maddox so far. Got ourselves a ball game, 15 up. Maddox Jr., that's Dante this time, and he connects. Last week, it was a lack of offense. Tonight might be a lack of defense. I don't know how you tip the cap, but either way, it's bombs away for both these squads. Maddox and Webster making great impacts off the bench for their respective clubs. Response, no, not this time. Underneath, though, Jardine with the offensive rebound. 
Good circulation right now for Hawaii's offense. McClanahan underneath, that shot was missed, and there is Riley with the offensive rebound. Second, third chance opportunities for Hawaii right now. They're within three with 11-12 to play here in this first half. Titans 18-15 over the Rainbow Warriors. In a world seeking answers, what does it take to advance discovery? To push the limits of innovation? To inspire the next generation? It takes a titan. basketball two new teams all new format but the same goal to win a big west championship like explorers the new world these 11 teams will try to navigate an ever-changing landscape it's about more than just winning games it's overcoming adversity and reflecting the pride of an entire university and it's never meant more than now this is big west basketball Dow State Fullerton shooting 57% from long range. And you see the score right now, a three-point lead, 18-15 over the University of Hawaii. There is the entire Titans bench along with their head coach, Dedrick Taylor, who, Bill, he had some choice words, not for us, but with us early in the week. He does not pull any punches. He is a candid man. He's had quite a career so far with Cal State Fullerton. He really has. And, of course, what a find for the Titans. He was close with James Harden to run there at Arizona State as an associate head coach. 2018 NCAA tourney. First ever back-to-back -back Big West Conference championship games. And how about this? The develop you hashtag, right? It's about degrees, winning games, signing pro contracts. He said 26 Titans do that. Here's Riley on the curl. Almost a little foul underneath. Let's see who this is on. Looks to be against Jalen Harris. Back to, to Dedrick Taylor. Talking to him, half the time I feel like I want to run through a wall for him, and the other half the time I feel like I want to pull up a chair and have a drink with him. He's that kind of guy. And you can see why his entire team loves to be around him. That shot attempt no good again. And back comes Cal State Forts and Justin Hemsley with that attempt. Comes Harris. Harris acrobatic off balance floater is no good. I concur on your comments, David, on Dietrich Taylor. You know, uh, Harris reminds me a little bit of Isaiah Thomas. Now, he's the free agent uh, point guard. Now, Harris is more of a look to dish first, with Thomas being a score first, but kind of the uh, physique, the approach to the game, many similarities to me. Fouls on McClanahan, his first. Harris, the charity strip this season, 75% coming into today's ball game. Substitution, Junior Mar Madut will come in, replacing Justin Webster. Webster's been strong so far for Hawaii. They've got nine points. David, how about this? We've played nine minutes, and we've got, you know, the stop start of the season, the pandemic and what have you. One combined turnover between both teams. That one blunder by the Titans. Very clean game thus far. It always makes for a better flow in a game for both of these teams, too, when you're not only shooting the ball well, but not giving the opposition an extra possession. Ball's on the deck, so it's a Titan and a Rainbow Warrior. Aaron Pass nearly picked off, but getting away with it. There's Torrey San Antonio. Looking baseline again. That's a foul. It'll be an offensive foul going back the other way against Dante Maddox Jr. Now that's just excellent positioning by Hawaii. Maintaining the proper perspective, reading the scouting report. You know Maddox is a driver, very well done. Matej Cholina was the one that drew the offensive foul. Cholina making his seventh appearance of the season. 
logging a lot of time, about 17 and a half minutes in the game. Madut pulls up, hand in his face, no. Maddox, though, on the take, going back the other way. Southpaw pulls up on the brakes, but he gets fouled and hacked over the right arm. Madut gets him this time. Interesting dynamic with both of these teams. You mentioned the top of the show with Hawaii, seven newcomers. Cal State Fullerton has eight. A little bit different of a blend, though. They have two true freshmen that are playing here this season and four junior college players. And to have that chemistry and the accountability and the squads to gel under the circumstances, Dave, makes it challenging. But both of these teams playing well tonight. San Antonio weaving his way through some bodies. There's Vincent Lee in the cleanup, plus the foul. A very opportunistic Vincent Lee. And we take a look at this here. Good drive by San Antonio. And when the shot goes up, you have to go back to Tom Izzo. Hit, find, and go get it. We find two Rainbow Warriors just turning to go directly for the rebound. But again, Lee gets there unabated, scores, and won. This is the back iron on that. Speaking of all those new players that are coming in, more on that. Courtney Sweet is with us. Hello, Courtney. Hey, David. Well, you know, we spoke earlier with Coach Aran Ganat about meshing all of these newcomers. And he said, you know, team building, the situation right now with the pandemic, it's actually provided an opportunity in its own unique way. You see them hit the shot right there. He said, look, the way that we found chemistry or we're trying to find it, we're trying to be creative. Zoom can only do so much. Believe it or not, guys, these road trips, he said, they're trying to maximize the time when they're in the bus on the way to the airport and on the way to the gym. Those are ways that they're able to really try to develop more team chemistry, David. Yeah, I, it's odd, right? Because what, what can you do when you don't have all kinds of activity? You got to talk, you got to work through these things, communicate, try to build some kind of camaraderie with your teammates. Limited time on the court doesn't provide that. There's Bayless screen and roll action. Jean Marie's back into it. Madut, this one will be a three. That's nothing but air underneath. That's an offensive putback by Jean Marie. Very heads up play by Jean Marie. The offense has the advantage, of course, David, on shots that do not draw iron. And Jean Marie and Lee, who kind of started this game, had their imprint on it early, factors again. Hawaii is surviving right now, despite the fact they're shooting a mere 36% from the field. Working baseline by Maddox this time, no, that is Trey Maddox. Trey Maddox is number two, Dante Maddox is 21, a foul underneath, and then hitting the deck is Jardine. Now that's a foul you can live with if you're Dedrick Taylor. You've been preaching transition defense, and you don't want Hawaii to get easy baskets, David. And, and to your credit, you mentioned their low field goal percentage. They want to get that offensive flow, get some easy baskets to find something on offense that they can cling to. But good transition deep by Foles and send them to the line. A bounce back of sorts to reality for Jardine last week. He scored seven points in the previous game against Cal State University of Bakersfield and took a mere six shots in that ball game. Prior to that, he ripped it up. He had 26 against UC Riverside, 10 of 12 from the field back on January the 9th. A grad transfer named one of the captains on this squad for Hawaii, and they have the lead. A great experienced player at Boise State playing in the NIT. He's got that maturity. He's been there around the college game. Lee trying to go to work now on Jean Marie. Up and under move. Patience still staying with Vincent Lee. Cal State Fortune with the advantage again. That's a great matchup with Lee and Jean Marie. Lee may have gotten away with a little shuffle of the feet there, but great offensive play in the isolation. A quick first step. Working baseline, though, is Bayless into the corner. Madut, good defense by Trey Maddox. He did not bite on that ball fake. And that's been a, it's been a good effort by Fullerton here defensively. No charge being called. The officials say play on underneath, though. A whistle and a foul will go against Jardine. 
And he's looking disgust right now. That fall is against him. As we had hit a break right now, Cal State Fullerton, the advance as we speak, 4 to 21. We'll be back. A pleasant Friday evening here in the city of Fullerton. Big West Conference basketball back on the menu tonight. And we are happy to say this, Bill, because this is game five of five in the Big West Conference. Everyone getting in the action tonight. That includes UC Davis. That is terrific. That's what we like to see, of course. Player safety paramount, along with coaching staffs, officials, everyone around the game. But certainly feels good to have a full scoreboard. It has been. It's been stop and go for several of these teams, but not UC Davis. In fact, they did not get out of the blocks until tonight. We'll talk all about that once we get to halftime. As Dr. Bradley pockets the three-point play. He came into the ball game only averaging about five minutes a game. This is his mere fifth appearance of the season for Diedrich Taylor. Jardine to G. Marie straight away. That one's back I never had a chance. There's Trey Max skying up for the rebound. One of the interesting things early on here, David, Hawaii is shooting 31% from two, fourth and 55%. Both teams shooting well from three. 38% for Hawaii, 57% for Fullerton. I'd say it's odd, but this has kind of been the story of both these teams this year. Mid-range, not so much, but they can let it fly from deep. Trey Maddox called on that one, Junior Madute. Madute called for the personal foul. Justin Hemsley coming back into the affair. Madute stepping aside. And you look at Hawaii, you know, they get 50 points per night from G. Marie, Jardine, Madute, and Webster. The two of four have gotten going here tonight, but not yet Madhu and Jardine. A couple areas of concern for Diedrich Taylor and Cal State Fullerton was how they were going to keep the pace offensively with what they've done this season. Coming into tonight's ball game, they were averaging 75 points a game. and It was a little shocking to him because he felt like the offense is gone from a year ago, but everyone's chiming in this year. And they've got terrific talent, David. They've got excellent skill players, and they're playing for each other. You know, he says, he listen, he just wants guys to play hard and play smart. He can handle mistakes, which are an inevitable part of the game. But they've certainly done that tonight. They're playing hard, playing smart, playing for each other, not with each other. Jardine hesitating on that shot. Gene Marie to Hemsley. You see the circulation outside. Justin Webster for three again. Short break for Justin Webster, and again, ripping the 20. He's four of five from long range. And he drained that over Lee on a mismatched situation. That looks like a hula hoop right now for Webster, as Michael Malone would say about Jamal Murray. Great cut right there for Dr. Bradley. He was beyond the three-point line on the right wing, and a perfect dime, 27-24 Titans. The doctor making a house call and the emphatic dunk. Great flash to the paint and excellent finish. Webster trying his luck again, not this time. A rare miss for him. He's now four of six from deep. He's got 12 points and he leads Hawaii. In fact, he leads everybody so far in scoring here tonight. But the Titans have the lead. Dante Maddox on the curl. Again, Dr. Bradley, no second chance opportunity. Third chance goes to Vincent Lee. Outside, another three-pointer by San Antonio Nell. No. Four pass intercepted, and here's Bradley. Bradley's got a bunch of energy here tonight. Good first step after that turnover. The takeaway, plus two. Yeah, great move by Bradley. You're right, David, to get to the basket and finish to avoid the contact. Talked about low turnovers, but why he's turned it over here just a little bit of late. Webster trying to respond up. A little hang time for Justin Webster, and he is feeling it. He's got 14, but Hawaii needs some stops. Very intelligent move by Webster. He's been incendiary from three. Guys are trying to close out on him. He puts it to the deck, showing his versatility. It takes it to the basket. Everyone's getting a touch for Cal State Fullerton, but keep an eye on number 15, Dr. Bradley. Here's Maddox, though, penetrating, got the roll. That's nice. He can be one of the best players in this league, according to Dedrick Taylor. You can see why. Gene Marie, no. 
bounced out, and there's Dr. Bradley. You know, notice with Bradley playing tonight, part of the reason for that is there's no Wayne Arnold. Wayne Arnold played a little bit last week in the victory, or excuse me, the loss against CSUN. Got into an argument with one of the assistant coaches, did not play on Sunday in that victory against CSUN. Foul by Hemsley underneath. And so we asked Diedrich Taylor about Arnold's status, and he's had some words for us and said, hey, uh, he's not acting right. And because of that, he's taken things into his uh, into accord with what his other players are doing. So Landis Spivey and Dr. Bradley are going to see a bigger load here for the next couple games. And, you know, it's the next man up mentality. It's team first that Diedrich Taylor is preaching. And he's got 11 deep already, David, here in the first half. And that'll certainly play a factor not only in for tonight's game, but tomorrow because these two teams will get together same place, same time. And Arnold, the guy coming back, has been in the program, scored about 10 points per night in conference last season. Maddox at the free throw line coming into tonight's ball game. 67% from the charity stripe. A good rebounding performance for him. He's already got nine points that eclipses what he did last week against CSUN when he was a mere one of eight from the field and scored just six points in that victory. So the good is Cal State Fullerton didn't need him on Sunday to get the W. The bad is, is you want one of your prolific scorers to see the ball go through the hoop. And he's done that here tonight. And that's what good players do. They'll find a way. They realize it's just a temporary scenario when you're cold. Cholino with a second chance opportunity. No, Wayne with the rebound. And back comes Cal State Fullerton. Rare miss in this game tonight underneath. Bradley was supposed to be the recipient. Your carryover. Officials did not call it, though. McClanahan underneath. And again, running baseline to baseline. It's Justin Hemsley for two. Great defense by McClanahan making it happen with the strip and then the dish. And Hemsley, of course, his brother Jeremy toiled at San Diego State. Very athletic family. Bradley jammed on the brakes and couldn't get the roll. Tough break for him. And if you're Hawaii, you're wondering, I don't not remember seeing a lot on Bradley on the scouting report. Look at McClanahan weave his way through, but no. Chalina with the rebound. Left wing, Hemsley for three, no. Bradley with the rebound. Nice play by Cal State Fortson, packing the paint. Under three minutes to play here in this first half. Couple of lead exchanges for Hawaii and Cal State Fortson, but the Titans with a five point lead. Now it's like the reggae hit from third world. Now that we found love, what are we gonna do with it? You've got a five point lead, two and a half on the clock. Let's see how the Titans manage it and how Hawaii responds. Step back three with a hand in his face. Dre Maddox could not connect. And here come the Rainbow Warriors. Jelena, the big man, launches a three and hits the three. 40% from distance, averaging about eight points a game. And a timeout on the court. Good response, though, for Hawaii. And the big man, Matei Chalina, brings the Rainbow Warriors within two. It's 33-31, Cal State Fullerton. skies to the top of the mountains to the depths of the deep blue sea and many places in between we make a difference through innovative research that matters neighbor to neighbor connecting Hawaii with the rest of the world changing lives near and far we are the University of Hawaii at Manoa. This 
is Big West Basketball. Two new teams, all new format, but the same goal, to win a Big West championship. Like explorers of the new world, these 11 teams will try to navigate an ever-changing landscape. It's about more than just winning games. It's overcoming adversity and reflecting the pride of an entire university. And it's never meant more than now. Cal State Fortune shooting well from beyond the arc and even better in the paint. And so far, so good. There is Dr. Bradley flushing that thing home. They're outscoring the Rainbow Warriors by eight in the paint. And they have a two-point lead, 33-31. And Bradley came in only playing five minutes per night in conference, Dave, and uh, making an impact here. He is athletic, kinetic, and really has... You know, this is the energy that Deidre Taylor was looking for. And it's being provided really systemically throughout the roster. Bradley making a nice push off the bench for the Titans. Cal State Fullerton really did set the tone early on. They went to Vincent Lee a couple times in their first three possessions. And that really opened up the court for the Titans shooters. Right, playing with great poise on offense, and that's what happens. You get good looks inside, it opens up the spacing, the three-point look. There is Trey Maddox again, rattling it through the cylinder from deep. And that's something that they monitor, those paint touches. Dietrich Taylor says, yeah, he likes to be in the 70s and the 80s as far as paint touches go. Team's leading score at just under 14 a game. He's got 13 right now. A near steal for him, ball is on the deck. Chalina loses the handle. Spivey outside, another three-pointer. No, not this time. Feed to Lee. The big man running from baseline to baseline, and he is promptly rewarded. Hawaii needs to take a timeout and talk things over. An excellent rim run. Great recognition by the teammates to reward him for his efforts. Excellent fundamentals, the footwork. Lee and the Titan is responding. The movement by Vincent Lee is one thing, but the footwork, not dragging that pivot, and he is really tormenting the Rainbow Warriors here tonight. Efficiently, he's got 10 points on five of six, but everything is close to the basket. It's exactly what you want from your big man. Yeah, and, and you know, we talked a little bit about it earlier, David, the stamp, from the standpoint of just being patient in the post. He's been very poised and intelligent, making smart plays. And you know, when you have a career high, 25. You have the double-double in overtime against Long Beach State. That kind of breeds that confidence. And again, reps remove doubt, as Monty Williams of the Phoenix Suns says. And you can see it in Lee's game. He's put in the reps. Speaking of those reps, Bayless, no. Skying up for that rebound is Spivey in transition. Cal State Fullerton in their white dominant uniforms. The orange, a little bit of blue, the navy blue. Trey Mannix. Back to Lee. Lee, right-handed hook shot, no. Second miss of the ball game for him. He's already in double digits. It's the seventh time in eight games this year that he has hit the double-digit mark. McLaughlin, that ball's knocked out of bounds with authority from Trey Max. They did not give up on the play. Yeah, just great help defense. And of course, Webster has been an absolute conundrum here. He's got 14 leading all scorers thus far in this game. Attracting a lot of attention, rightfully so. And the engagement is there tonight for Cal State Fullerton. Sweet feed though underneath, and Jardine makes it count this time. A great execution, baseline out of bounds by Hawaii. That's tough when you're a coach. You know you've gone through this in the walkthrough, but to the Rainbow Warriors credit, great execution. Shot clock and game clock differentials about 13 seconds, maybe 14. Maddox off the drive, left hand to right hand is nice. High arcing off the window, quite a first half for Trey Maddox. He's got 15 points to lead all scores. Tremendous body control. Like, like people around the program say, he could be playing on Sundays on the gridiron, but a terrific move. Pass is intercepted again. And here's Spivey going coast to coast. Dante Maddox with time running down in the first half. Hemsley trying to get a final shot off, and Trey Maddox is called for the foul. Back to that pick, though, by Atlanta Spivey. I mean, speaking of football, he looked like a defensive back sniping that ball away. Yeah, he's long and rangy as Spivey out of Stockton. 
Columbia Community College. Spivey's a great story because he went to a small high school where he got no looks. And then he goes to a junior college, which is the smallest in the state of California. He wanted to play basketball, but his mom said, you got to do two things. you got to work on your education, and you got to continue to play ball. Do not give up on that goal, that dream. And he was rewarded. Excellent perseverance. Here is Hemsley at, Hemsley at the charity stripe. Just 57% on the year with .2 to go in this first half. And he makes both. There'll be a quick inbound, and that'll do it. But Cal State Fullerton really set the tone early on. Going to their big man, Vincent Lee, and it worked everything on the outside as well. They shot in the first half, five of 10 from long range, being led right now by Trey Maddox, who's poured in 15 so far. Vincent Lee with 10 points. And at the end of the first half of play, Cal State Fullerton with a 42-35 advantage over the University of Hawaii. Yeah, there you go, David. 25 combined points for Maddox and Lee, 14 to nine bench point scoring advantage. Well done by the Titans on their home floor. And they are certainly protecting it. As we take a look at what we got on tap, scores around the Big West Conference, and then we'll take a peek also at the first half stats and highlights. Speaking of all those highlights, send down the third member of our team, Courtney Sweet. Courtney, what do you got? All right, Coach, your team definitely came out with more energy and edge, which you were hoping they would. Defensively, they're doing a good job holding them 35%. You're getting your paint touches. What's the focus in the second half, though, to close this one out? Focus is the same. Can we keep up the same energy? There are our percentages defensively. What they're doing is a, is a direct reflection of our energy and our energy defensively, and it's allowing us to get out and transition and run. The only problem is, is I don't think we're rebounding the ball as well as we can. That's an area that we're going to have to sure up if we expect to win this game. And how about the focus on Webster in the second half? Because he, he got a little hot the first half. He got a lot hot. You know, <laughs> he's caught us in rotation. They're a good team. They, they make open shots, and, and they got them. And that's, that's, that's on us. That's something that we're going to have to sure up in a, in a rotation that we're going to have to clean up in the second half. All right. Thanks, Coach. We'll see you next half. Thanks. Good luck. Guys, back to you. Courtney, thank you very much. Dedrick Taylor trying to add to the misery of Hawaii. They've lost three straight. And in the first half of play, Titans lead 42-35. More to come on the other side. Back inside Titan Gym, David Gascon, Bill Horrenda, Courtney Sweet as we're at recess right now in Cal State Fullerton with a seven-point lead. Large part of that was Trey Maddox Jr. in the first half. He was really carving things up for the home team. Yeah, no question about it. Trey Maddox getting it done, stepping up here for Fullerton as they try to maintain the steering wheel against Hawaii. They've had a lot of success here against them. Yeah, trying to snap a five-game losing streak to these Rainbow Warriors. So the first half has been owned by them. But also, more importantly, they want to set things up for the rest of the remainder of this conference schedule as well. Uh, games in the Big West Conference, rather unique because everyone's playing tonight, Bill. One of them, in fact, with UC Santa Barbara, they dominated CSUN here tonight. Biggest reason for that was Ja'Cory McLaughlin. He went off. He was 6 of 10 from the field, 5 of 8 from downtown. He had 21 points, and he blew out the Matadors, 105-58. Just the second road win this year for the Gauchos. Oodles of offense for UC Santa Barbara. Wow, that's a big number to put up. I'm sure CSUN will want to make some adjustments at the Matadome. Always nice to see the entire slate of games, though. And we look at the Big West Conference preseason rankings from where they are to where we are now. I, the media has their opinions, but of course, we got to see things played out. And I think the surprise for some would be Cal State Bakersfield. The Roadrunners this year have been dynamite. Offensively, defensively, they are a tough out. Oh, man, they are tremendous. I mean, Tajay Moore, the conference player of the week currently. Rod Barnes has got that experience. Uh, they are a dangerous team. The relentless, inexorable D, and they finish at the other other end. Great balance on that squad. And for UC Davis to play in just their first game tonight in conference play, I'd be kind of curious to see how these Aggies finish things out because everyone's looking right now to March, and that is the Big West Conference Tournament. And Davis, like Irvine, they, they don't rebuild, they just reload. Ezra Manion and company and what have you, and Irvine, of course, you know, they've lost so much, but they're still so tough with Felton Green back. Yeah, Russell Turner's got a young group, but it's a confident group, and the Anteaters are currently the pace car in the Big West Conference as we get ourselves ready for March and Las Vegas for the Big West Conference Tournament. We are at the break right now from Titan Gym on the campus of Cal State Fullerton and Trey Maddox Jr. leading the charge right now. Cal State Fullerton up by seven. More to come on the other side.
Back inside Titan Gym on a happy Friday night to all of you. David Gascon, Bill Horrendon, Courtney Sweep, our entire ESPN crew. Cal State Fullerton with a 42-35 lead over the University of Hawaii, making their first appearance here against Cal State Fullerton. And Bill, the first half so far in this ball game, I think I guess the theme of it is catch the ball, shoot the ball, and see it go in. Yeah, absolutely. Good offense from both squads, particularly Fullerton, of course, with Maddox and Lee scoring 25 of their 40 points. So from that standpoint, you want to keep that going. But as Coach Deidre Taylor told Courtney, rebounding is going to be vital. They were out-rebounded by a few in the first half. Which is fascinating, too, because they're getting production not only from their starters, but from their bench. Yeah, they really are. And they, they've gone 11 deep, getting good production from uh, Di Dr. Bradley and others. Uh, Maddox, the freshman, coming in. So it's been a good systemic, poised effort offensively for Fullerton. Yeah, and speaking of that, Dr. Bradley does have seven points coming off the bench for Cal State Fullerton. But you see the parts that got to be troubling for Hawaii. Points in the paint. I mean, it's like a boxing match. You're not going to beat him with a haymaker, but Cal State Fullerton is going body to body to body, and they've kept at it. Yeah, so they need to offer more resistance defensively. It starts with better ball pressure, and again, better ball U-man scenario deterring the, the entry passes into the paint. they got to make life more difficult for Lee and Maddox as well on the perimeter. And we see how this game unfolded in the first half. Both teams had a concerted effort to pack the paint, and things open up from the outside for both these squads. I mean, you look at, at Justin Webster in the first half. He had 14 points to lead Hawaii in offensive output, but the other side was Trey Maddox. I mean, he had had a crease and every time he saw it he took it and he was rewarded by it yeah very opportunistic you see the great dish here to Bradley and the excellent ball see that's too easy that entry pass into Lee and he converts of course and again just here catch and shoot off the curl gorgeous offense and here the ability to create off the dribble in traffic with help with great body control Maddox getting it done end of the first half of play and both teams in the court right now getting set for the second half Hawaii trying to snap a three-game losing streak, but they need some help. They're down 42-35. Hawaii's 5-1 all-time here at Titan Gym, but behind the eight ball right now. Second half about to get underway. Titans with a comfortable lead at 42-35. David Gascon, Bill Horenda, and Courtney Sweet with you Friday night. This Big West Conference action continues here. A full slate of games. Hawaii right now 1-3 in conference play. Cal State Fullerton at 2-4. For DJ Taylor, Bill, I, I guess adjustments maybe are needed. They didn't do a lot bad in that first half, but what would you tweak if you were him? Certainly, you want to finish defensive possessions, David, okay? It doesn't end until you secure the defensive rebound. That was a cause for concern he shared with Courtney. I think that'll be a big emphasis. Keep up the intensity, the defense, but we've got to finish our defensive possessions. If you're just joining us in that first half, Trey Max went off for Cal State Fullerton. Three of five from deep, had 15 points in that first half. Justin Webster trying to respond for the road team. Hawaii led by him in his 14 points. Five of nine from the field, four of six from downtown. But the area of concern right now, points in the paint, you're getting doubled up, 24 to 12. And that's why the Titans have a seven-point lead. And remember, Hawaii 0-3 when trailing at the half, 3-0 when leading at the half. They certainly want to reverse that trend on the first of a back-to-back -back here at Titan Gymnasium. Offensive productivity for Hawaii this year. First three games of the season, they're averaging about 87 points a game. It's dipped down to 65 in the last three games. That's why they have a three-game losing streak. The offense just has dried up a bit. Right, and, you know, Rick Pitino says comfortable teams shoot a high percentage. Hawaii was uncomfortable against Bakersfield, somewhat comfortable here. Uh, and that's what you want to do is get good shots if you are the Rainbow Warriors, particularly early here in the second half. So we'll see how this second half unfolds. Max going back to work, bodied off, a three-point on the way by right cell. No, rattles in and out, tough break for him, but a rebound and control by Hawaii. And it's critical as well for Hawaii to get stops, get good looks, work your offense. They need to get Madhu, Jardine. They need to get them going offensively. Even Jean Marie who only had six in the first half. There's Jean Marie right on cue against Vincent Lee. He goes up, fouled in the process of shooting, but he'll get a couple free throws. And it's got to come from Webster, of course. But again, Webster, Madhu, Jardine, and Jean Marie, that's 50 points per night if you're Hawaii. That's 70% of your production. 
I mean, you'll take it where you can get it. If Hemsley steps up, whoever steps up. But those are your main guys. They need to get them going offensively. G. Marie, a transfer from the University of San Diego, misses the first of two. Not a local guy from Montreal, Canada. Not quite sure, though, who his love is with, if it's with the Canadians or the Maple Leafs. That might be a little bit of a heated conversation for those north of the border. Pro probably the Raptors, I would say. That's something <laughs> everyone, everyone can rally around, right? That's true. That is true. NBA champs from a couple years ago. He hits the second of two. You got to love the international flair throughout the Big West Conference. Certainly, these teams, uh, no exception to that. Absolutely. A ton of players that played down under in Australia. Josh Hall, really quiet in the first half. Back iron there. Jardine skies it for the rebound. And here's Hawaii. Had a lead a couple times in the first half, but gave it away to Cal State Fullerton because of the damage they did in the paint. Trey Max with a great steal right there. He baited Jardine. Excellent help defense in the right position. Makes the steal and finishes. Maddox it. twirling at the cut for two and one. Now, it's tough for Hawaii to have an empty possession here because you've gotten a couple of stops, but now the turnover, and Maddox knows what to do. He goes just about unabated to finish at the other end. And for Hawaii, again, the transition defense uh, has got to be better. You cannot let Maddox uh, do that in that fashion that easily. Maddox averaging just about 14 points a game this season. His season high is 27, 11 of 16 from the field against UC Santa Barbara to start 2021, literally on January the 1st. Here he is to complete the three-point play. And that's the one thing in that first half, Bill, that we did not see at all for either squad. They didn't settle for the outside shot. They took it when it was given to them. Speaking of those adjustments, Courtney Sweet was able to catch up with the Ranganat in that first half to see what kind of adjustments need to be made. All right, Coach, first half, Fullerton, tough, 42 points defensively. They've been tough. How do you find that balance this half of offensively maybe getting into a flow, defensively getting stops? I think offensively we're in a flow. We got good shots. We took care of the ball. We just didn't miss our layups. We weren't strong around the rim. We got to get offensive rebounds. The, and we've been doing a good job on the glass except for the offensive boards. We're not guarding. And it starts with containing uh, Maddox and Lee. All right, well, good luck. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Guys. So certainly a lot of things that he needs to work on with his troops. And there's Bayless with a sweet finger roll for two. And you heard him talk about offensive rebounding and defending. Josh Hall with a bullet feed, but he's going to be called for the offensive foul. Jardine underneath to take that one right in the crest of his jersey. And that's what Hawaii needs more of. Good, smart, intelligent defense. You know, you just cannot be, get beat off the dribble consistently. And again, you need a collective effort here if you're the Rainbow Warriors. Here's some pressure by Fullerton. This is a great way to get your energy going. Thought maybe we'd see that early in this game, but the Titans didn't need it. David, they came out strong right at the tip. Here's Bayless looking for a screen. He goes the opposite way underneath Nell on that attempt. Bad look right there for Hawaii, and here comes Cal State Fullerton. They're in control right now, right, Sel? Looking for some separation with Vincent Lee. But nearly wire to wire for Cal State Fullerton. Back to work goes Lee. Double team came quickly. Dr. Bradley underneath and got the bounce. That's again the second time in this game that Dr. Bradley has cut right to the hoop out of nowhere. Now notice the adjustment. Jardine went to double right away, but good recognition by Lee. And Bradley, again, opportunistic cutting to the basket. Good defense, a little bit better offense. Three-pointer never had a chance. That is an air ball by Jardine. It always helps that your big man who's passing the ball around is six foot eight. Lee's able to look over everybody to survey. A little bit different from the point guards that are down low in the block at times. Yes, this is true. Ten point leads, the largest one for either side this evening. Lee, San Antonio really didn't do a lot in the first half. 0 for 2 from outside. It's that man, though, Trey Maddox, who's shoulder the load. Maddox. That one on the foul will occur before the shot. At least it appears from one official. Wait for confirmation on it. But he got Madut up in the air. 
and he's called for the foul. And guys like San Antonio, David, sometimes it reminds me of the Einstein quote, not everything that counts can be counted. Sure. You know what I mean? Just the energy, uh, we're not tracking deflections, but things of that nature, San Antonio brings in abundance. Great energy guy. Lee terminated that dribble. Here's Dr. Bradley with five to go on the shot clock. Someone's got to do something with it quickly, right? Sell the step back. No. Bradley goes up and he's fouled in the process of shooting. That's the hustle from a guy that hasn't seen a lot of action, but is being rewarded right now by his head coach. Yeah, he has been terrific. And again, for Hawaii, you're not able to control your defensive board, the cardinal rule of NBA playoff basketball, according to UB Brown, the Hall of Famer and a very opportunistic Fullerton team. They've got the avarice. Look at this on the offensive glass, just attacking. Officials will say that foul occurred before the shot attempt against Kasten Jardine. So non-shooting foul, but here's Bradley going back to work again. Has seven, looking for nine. Did not get it that time. Hemsley underneath. and. Bradley called for the over the back and the foul being called against him. Timeout on the court, 15.55 to play here in regulation. It's all Trey Maddox and Cal State Fortson. They are up by 10. 69% from the field is pretty darn good if you ask me. Trey Maddox and Vincent Lee combined are doing just that. They have 27 so far and Cal State Fortson leading 48-38 in the second half against University of Hawaii. And you know what's good news about that as well, David? They average 28 per game combined in conference. We've got 16 minutes to go here, basically. And also, Fullerton shooting 60%, two-point field goal percentage. Hawaii just 35% from two. Cal State Fullerton really having their way offensively with Hawaii. No reason to panic, though, if you're Iran Ganat. His teams throughout the course of his tenure with the Rainbow Warriors, when they've won the rebounding advantage, they've won 85% of the time. Yeah, it's a huge a determining factor in their success. And it's something that was reinforced, reiterated at halftime, according to Courtney's report with Coach Gannat. Not this time for Webster, there's Bayless. Madut back to Bayless, corner three, drills it. Bayless, fearless Australian Aboriginal descent, drawing the comparisons to Patty Mills. We see it there, he steps up, drains the jumper, can't leave him alone. From Sydney, Australia, member of the UAT national team in Australia. But now playing here in North America. Different scene, of course, different weather as well. Maddox underneath for Bradley, could not find the handle, eventually does get to it, volleyed around. Shot clock winding down, that three-pointer's no good. That's a rare bad possession for Cal State Fullerton this evening. Hemsley on the take, shot will not count even if it did fall. Whistle and the foul occurred before that play. It's gonna be on Vincent Lee. So, David, we know it's a game of runs, and you have to create them, sustain them, survive them. Let's see what Hawaii can do here. The Bayless three, good defensive possession, as you well noted. Can they put something together here? Down seven on the road, ton of time remaining. Javon McClanahan is in the ball game, replaces Madut. McClanahan from Viejo, California. He's on the touch right there. Hemsley left open for three, lets it fly. No. Skying up for that rebound's Wang, but a nice intercept. A good picking of the pocket by Bayless. He did too much with it by himself. Takes it and gives it right back. Maddox on the hesitation. See how Cal State Fullerton operates this second half. Dr. Bradley, oh, that was pretty. You talk about a highlight real play. There is Dr. Bradley again. He's got nine. Great extension. In all four points against CSUN last week in limited time. A modest eight minutes. I think he'll be logging a lot more than that in days to come. Webster, no, but on the baseline is Hemsley, so that will go right back to Cal State Fullerton. 
Titans so far in the second half have kept the Rainbow Warriors at arm's length. Every time Hawaii has a push in them, the Titans have responded. They really have, David. And Bradley, what an X factor. Five of eight, 11 points. He has been terrific. Just not used at all this season. And that's, of course, because of the depth outside. Maddox for three. He got it. Dante Maddox from distance. He's also in double digit scoring now. That's four players for Cal State Fullerton that have hit that mark and they lead by 12. When Hawaii watches the tape tonight, they're gonna to be disappointed and wanna make that correction for tomorrow night, regardless of the outcome. They got hung up on the assignment there on a screen, too easy for Maddox. Wayne came out late to close on Bayless and he drills it. There hasn't been enough possessions defensively for Hawaii where I, I've seen them get underneath the jersey of Cal State Fullerton. Times look comfortable offensively. Yeah, and that's exactly what Coach Gannott said at the half. David, you're exactly right. Cutting baseline is Dr. Bradley with a flush. Bradley has been exceptional, a high flyer. They just found him on the John Wayne Airport air traffic control. That's number 15, flight 15, Bradley. Cholina for two got the bounce. Yeah, Dr. Bradley just coming out of nowhere for Cal State Fullerton this evening. Picking up for Wayne Arnold. Wayne Arnold is one of the team's leading scorers this year, but he has not played a lot. He's only played in three games. There's Dante Max had that shot blocked from the backside in Bayless. Here he comes in transition, five on two for Hawaii. Outside there is Webster for three, yes. Gorgeous offense by Hawaii. Now they gotta find it defensively. Bayless has been great here, playing with great energy in the second half. And Diedrich Taylor wants to take a timeout and talk things over for Cal State Fullerton. Defense leading to offense for the University of Hawaii, trying to snap a three-game losing streak. And that winning trend here at Titan Gym, right now they're down by seven, 55-48. Cal State Fullerton with the advantage. Justin Webster and the University of Hawaii trying to dig themselves out of a rut. Advantage at one point for Cal State Fullerton was 10. Down to 7, 55 to 48. Webster so far has got 17 points for Hawaii. Five of six from downtown. He is nearly white hot in this ball game to lead the Rainbow Warriors. Yeah, he has been terrific. And it's really going to boil down to who gets stops here, David, in my gut as to who's going to come out of here with a win. Maddox outside. Dante Max sharing the ball. Not this time. Team fighting for it. And that one goes off of Jardine. He's not happy with it. He thought Bradley went over his back. Not the case, though. We got a media timeout on the court. Under 12 to play in regulation. Cal State Fullerton with the lead. We are sky high with you on this Friday night. David Gascon, Bill Horenda, and Courtney Sweet, our entire ESPN crew. Thank you for joining us tonight. We're at Cal State Fullerton, the home team right now is up 55-48 over the University of Hawaii. All right, now it's got a little bit of a push in them. Titans trying to respond. Trey Maddox has got 17 points to lead them, but there's Dr. Bradley who's come into the ball game off the bench, grabs his own miss. He's got 13. Here's Maddox again. Shot clock is at 13 right now. Dante Maddox only shuffled his pivot foot. Foul is on Bales. These offensive rebounds are really destructive to your defensive effort, David. It takes so much energy to get a stop, and then when you give it up on the offensive glass, it just makes it difficult. This has been a low free throw shooting game as well. Could become a factor as we move on. Six free throws for Hawaii, seven for Fullerton. Fall away for Maddox. That one never had a chance. Good rebound and a closeout. So lean up, and back comes Bales in the University of Hawaii. They've had a couple leads, but it was all in the first half. But Dute to Jardine. Jardine averaging about 13 points a game this season. He's been neutralized. He's got a mere four. Madute off the dribble. No. See if the official calls that one prior to the attempt. That's going to be the case as well. Fouls against Vincent Lee. Now notice how they come out of the media break and they run a play here from Madute. 
And, you know, he is seeing bodies in front of him, uh, primarily Maddox, Lee helping, Bradley helping. He only has two points and only four field goal attempts for Madhu. Jardine didn't get the second bounce on that, stays out. Dante Max with the rebound. And Madhu leading the team in field goal tries and also minutes, but a lot on the offensive end in terms of productivity. Dr. Bradley, who's got 13. And again, quick off the dribble drive and one. Great strong take for Jalen Harris to get the basket. Yeah, the Isaiah Thomas-like drive. You know, great spacing there by Fullerton as Dedrick Taylor has been stressing to us that they need. The spacing allows Harris to go one-on-one -on -one here and finish without any help from Hawaii. And that's due to the good spacing. You know, what happens is if you help off of the strong side corner, that three-point shot is open. That can be deleterious to your offense. Great opportunistic play by Harris at the finish. Harris playing at a couple of programs, was with Nevada for two years, and then played last year at Casper Community College before making his way here to Cal State Fullerton. Lead is back up to 10. Jardine. Double team, triple team came. Players on the deck won again by Cal State Fullerton. Tend to play in regulation. And they have really dominated from nearly wire to wire. And that was Harris making the play on the defensive end of the floor as well. Great balance being demonstrated by Harris. Maddox high, arcing for three, got it. Now the entire bench for Cal State Fullerton is smiles, even behind those masks. Trey Maddox from long range again, and Hawaii is taking a timeout to talk things over. Team's leading scorer coming into tonight's ball game has been everything and then some. He's got 20 points in this affair, 7 of 11 from downtown. You'll see why right here. Yeah, and he's doing it very efficiently, as you mentioned, David. And just good closeout, but just better offense. It just seems like he has been oozing confidence and really feeling it here right from the get-go uh, as Trey Maddox. And remember, this is a kid who played at Oakland under Greg Campy, a great program there. We all know about Kendrick Nunn with the Miami Heat. He's playing well lately. And you know what? Trey Maddox says, I'm going to emulate Nunn here a little bit and try to get it done on game one of a back-to-back. -back. I know it's not the same flavor, but man, Colin Sexton the other night for the Cavaliers, a bright young star, he lit up the Brooklyn Nets. He had 42 points in a double overtime victory. That was a Brooklyn team with Harden, Durant, and Kyrie Irving. And these shooters, when they shoot, they get hot. You gotta watch out. Yeah, he was absolutely incendiary. Madut on the take, he is fouled in the act of shooting. And one thing you need to do, David, if it's Trey Maddox, if it's Colin Sexton, you must adjust. I mean, Brooklyn only had the ultra switching defense employed. I didn't see much else, but that's a learning process. They're playing again tonight in Cleveland, by the way, game two. And here we see Madhu getting to the free throw line. Now for Hawaii, this can be an effective strategy to, to close this gap. You know, you want to be in single digits before the next media break. Sure. Get to the free throw line, stop the clock, chip away at it. You're not going to get it in one possession, but certainly this production from Madhu is well received and expected. They really need it. He scored six points the other night against Cal State University of Bakersfield. 63% free throw shooter. Deficit is 11. You got to love Bakersfield defense. If you like hustle, tenacity, inexorable defense, you're going to love the Roadrunners. What a great addition, along with UC San Diego, to the conference. Yeah, they beat UC Riverside at the SRC Arena this evening, 47 to 45. UC Davis got their first taste of Big West Conference activity this evening, but UC San Diego got the better of them. Gabe Hadley had 29 points to carve them up, 89-69. Like you said earlier, David, just great to have these scores. Particularly if you're on the left side of the column, you like them a little bit better, of course. <laughs> Easy for me to say sitting here. Maddox for three. He got fouled in the act of shooting and won. Opportunity for a four-point play. Bales got him on the elbow. Now, Dante Maddox comes into tonight 
And that's the alarming thing when you're not only are you sh fouling a, a jump shooter, you're shooting one from long range, and Maddox Jr. completes the four point play, but Bales got him across the arm. Dante Max Jr., 42% from long range, and he connects right there. Lead is up to 14. It's the largest of the evening. Here's Bales on the take. That is strong against Vincent Lee, who tried converging, but a little too late. Yeah, Bales has been strong. He's been a kind of a coming out party for a number of players. Bradley, Dante Maddox, Bales looks solid. A little time off goes a long way. Yeah, I would think that, in particularly Fullerton, has got to feel really good about this. Of course, we have a ton of time here, but it's been a great effort by Fullerton. But again, you want as close to 40 minutes as you can get. And it's an area that Dedrick Taylor said he wanted to work on with his guys because last year he had a group he felt like looked for numbers, just numbers. And he wants a team. He wants continuity there. Eight to go on the shot clock. Three-point on the way by Max Jr. Again, no. Rebound by Madut. Cross-court feed. Here's Bales. Madut left wide open for three. Yes. There you go. Madut starting to percolate for the Rainbow Warriors. Can they get some stops now? Madut averaging 10 points a game this season. Shooters are certainly going to shoot, but left wide open like that. Bad breakdown for Cal State Fullerton. Dante Maddox. Shot clock back at eight again. A couple of trips so far for Cal State Fullerton. They've allowed the shot clock to wind down past the 10 second mark as Hall misses that long range two. Shoveling pass from G. Marie, too hot to handle by Madute. Back comes Cal State Fullerton. They had numbers, but the transition D was pretty good. Yeah, that was the right idea, David. You're right, they just couldn't complete it. Nice reverse by Vincent Lee. Lee's got 12 points, six of seven from the field, working on a double double. He's got 12 and six. But everything Cal State Fullerton has done so far has been picture perfect, at least in terms of the counter. Against Hawaii. Interesting possession there. Maduda in initiating the offense. A little two-man game. We see it now with Bales and Jean Marie. Good help by Hall here with Fullerton. Jean Marie underneath. No. Josh Hall didn't go up for it because of that. Opportunity for Cal State Fullerton to go back the other way. But no, it's going to be a wipeout on that play. Offensive foul against Latrell Wright sells. We had an immediate timeout. Under seven minutes to play in regulation. Hawaii trying to snap a three-game losing streak, but they're on their heels right now as Vincent Lee's got 12. 66-55, Cal State Fullerton with the advantage. Haymaker after haymaker so far in this second half of play. Trey Maddox and Cal State Fullerton with the lead, 67-55. Maddox has 20 points to lead everybody in scoring 7 of 11 from the field and 4-6 from downtown. Justin Webster, not too shabby either. He's got 17 on their side for Hawaii. The one difference, though, was Webster needs some help. Nobody else for Hawaii is in double-digit scoring. Not the case for the Titans, Bill. They got three other players that have hit at least 10 points. Now, how about this? Dante Maddox Jr. comes in averaging eight points per night. Dr. Bradley averages one. They have combined for 27 for Fullerton. And Webster has been quiet here in the second half, just three of his 17 coming after intermission. They want to get him going for sure. Uh, the energy's been there. The effort's been there for Cal State Fullerton. But the execution is obviously the biggest difference so far. Not to say that Hawaii's been flat tonight, but their shots aren't falling. And while they have a slim advantage in the rebounding column, points in the paint and obviously the efficiency from beyond the arc are the main difference in this affair. Madut in the corner for three, can't get it to go. Bales with the rebound, second chance opportunity here for Hawaii. Bales has been really solid here for the Rainbow Warriors. Gotta like his game. Webster off the dribble amongst the trees. No, he's decked. See who this foul is on. It's gonna go against Trey Maddox. Maddox was there along with Josh Hall. Hall and Vincent Lee, one and two in the conference in rebounding, and they've certainly been strong here tonight, more so with Vincent Lee. 
And Hawaii averages 15 made free throws per game in conference. I believe that is their eighth made free throw tonight. And again, trailing on the road, getting to the free throw line and capitalizing, that could be a way for Hawaii to get back in this. Webster had 23 against the Roadrunners of Cal State University Bakersfield last week, but the one guy, you can't win. You could steal a game on occasion, but it's tough to win in this conference with just one guy going off. He's got 18, but he needs some help. Oh, you're absolutely right, David. No question about it. Those top four guys in double figures average 50 points per game, 70% of their scoring. You're right, he needs the help. Yeah, speaking of Jean-Marie, Jardine, and Madut, not that they're missing in action, but they just have not been loud here tonight on the offensive column. Here's Bales. They're in five to play in regulation, and Cal State Fortune with that advantage. Yubi Brown says an NBA game is never over, and you could say the same for the Big West. Bales with a step back. No, Hall cleans it up. See if there's a push tonight late in this ball game for Hawaii. They're in danger of losing four straight. Foul underneath, and that's going to get against Cholina. This is the worst start for Hawaii since they've entered the Big West Conference a handful of years ago back in 2012. And, and, you know, David, that's a great point. That's what you need to see here from Hawaii is the effort and the push, as you said, over the, the final five minutes. Regardless of the outcome, you need to see that energy. You know, they have such great respect throughout the conference. You talk to opposing coaches, talking about how really talented they are, great pieces. And they're just, again, as we said at the top, just kind of struggling to find it. Iran Ganat, you two are familiar with locations. He's a Jersey guy, along with yourself. Absolutely, a guy who led Hawaii to the tournament in his first season, the upset win over Cal. Quite a first impression, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Went 28-6 that year. He was the Big West Conference Coach of the Year in 2015, 2016. Madute, up and under move is nice. Got the defense up in the air. Torrey San Antonio with his hand in the cookie jar. He got caught. 11 point lead. The dude is starting to get loose. Now let's see if Hawaii can turn over Fullerton. You need that defensive pressure. You need to finish defensive possessions. Back to the bigs and Vincent Lee. Bales came with a double team. Lee with his left hand. No, that's great defense converging down the paint. Stop and go for Webster, yes. Diedrich Taylor on the opposing sideline right now, telling his offense to speed things up. He might take a timeout to talk things over. And we'll see. Let these guys play it out. I'll tell you, that was a great finish by Webster. Excellent decision to finish. Great concentration. Again to Lee, this time with his right. He went left with his previous attempt, this one with his right. And it's good for two. Now, they're not fronting Lee. He's receiving the ball very easily in the post. We'll see if there's an adjustment there as this game concludes. Madute's got nine points, can't get to 11, turns that ball over. A rare one tonight for Hawaii, and here comes Maddox. Eight turnovers in this game for Hawaii. A mere seven for Cal State Fullerton, so you're not giving the opposition extra opportunities to score. Near intercept. But again, the pull-up, that's nice. Right, so hasn't looked for a shot tonight, but he's been compelled in that occasion to pop it. And we got 324 to play here in regulation. And Cal State Fullerton is in control right now because of Trey Maddox and everybody else chiming in with double-digit scoring. Vincent Lee has got 14. And Cal State Fullerton up 73 to 60. More to come on the other side. Cal State Fullerton up right now by 13, 73 to 60. But we take a peek at both of these head coaches because the resumes continue to build. Yeah, there you go. And, uh, you know, for Gennad, you got to love the candor. He says, you got to do a better job for this group of losing bugs. Avea, Carper, Holland, Stansbury, Rymo, a lot of new pieces and a lot of newcomers for Fullerton as well. Eight of them. Diedrich Taylor teetering on that 100 career. Win mark, the 21st coach in Big West Conference history to hit that benchmark. Underneath, 
Cholina got the bounce but did not get to fall down. Bales with the rebound, but he stepped on the baseline, and that's a turnover. Yeah, that's a tough break for the Rainbow Warriors there. That putback is going to go down 99 times out of 100 in the offensive rebound, and Bales is on the line. But, yeah, both of these coaches have done great jobs, and like you said, David, approaching 100 wins, and one of them is going to be a little bit closer tonight. Another one's still going to be three shy. Taylor right now is sitting with his wooden mark. He's got 97, so he's three away. Gannot at 89. But they're not in it for the personal accolades. Those things are more of a, a luxury. Here's Maddox. Step back, a hand in his face for three, and that could be your exclamation point. He just freezes the defender. And you're right, David, that could be the coup de grace. A 16-point lead with 2.20 to go. 23 points, 5 of 7 from distance. And he's been everywhere offensively for Cal State Fullerton. Madute into the corner for three, got it. That's an encouraging sign for Hawaii, regardless of the outcome. Madute getting loose here. That should bode well for tomorrow night and beyond. Hawaii leading this all-time series, 13 up and four down. They're staring at it right now. Losers of three straight, and they're on the edge of losing four in a row. And right now for Cal State Fullerton, you see that space. They're just looking to bleed some clock. It's been surgical for them. They've really diced up. Max trying to put one home against Chilina. He's challenged. A foul occurs underneath. And to amplify your point, David, that comes with two seconds remaining on the shot clock. Great att aggressive take by Maddox. Dante Maddox, of course, not wearing number 21. And Trey Maddox, number two, has been sensational. No relation there. But they have a good rapport. That's according to Dedrick Taylor. Trey Maddox, Dante Maddox, both juniors. Both players seeing a full length of activity this year. Eight games. Trey Maddox started in all eight of them. And a timeout by Dedrick Taylor. We'll see if he empties his bench. 15-point lead. So we're looking at this game right now on a Friday night. But it's game one of a back-to-back. -back. You're going to have to make some adjustments if you're Hawaii. But for Cal State Fullerton, I mean, they've been clean and crisp here tonight. I guess the most important thing for Dedrick Taylor is how do you duplicate that 24 hours from now? Yeah, well, certainly you hope that the hot hands continue uh, of Maddox and Vincent Lee. And you're right, David, from that standpoint, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So you've done a lot of really good things. So I would think uh, from uh, Coach Taylor's perspective, this has been a good night. But it's very difficult to beat someone twice in a row. And from Hawaii's standpoint, I think they're going to have to defend a lot better tomorrow night. They're just going to have to paint, protect, they're going to have to not allow straight line drives and easy looks. You know, did they go to some zone tomorrow night? Do they try to not practice? Not that they did tonight, but you cannot practice egalitarian defense. You know, Lee and Maddox have been so devastating tonight. They deserve a little special attention. We'll see what Gannat draws up tonight at the hotel. They've cut down their turnovers tonight in half. Jardine goes in for two. More cosmetic than anything right there for Jardine. And the other thing you've got to be pleased with if you're Fullerton is, you know, your bench production has been outstanding. I mean, you know, Bradley comes out. He's got 13 as well as Dante Maddox, Jr., 14. That's a combined 27. They usually average nine, and eight of them are from Maddox. Bradley has come out of nowhere emerging. So uh, good systemic production for Fullerton. It's just been strong throughout. I mean, game just changes so much when you see the ball go through the hoop early on. And that gave the Titans confidence, and they have never looked back. Yeah, and that's what the coaching staff, Coach Taylor preaching, David Wright, a good start. They had some subpar starts, in their opinion, coming into tonight. So it's nice as a coaching staff to see that being inculcated on the floor by your players. And we talked a lot about that on the call, the fact that, you know, purpose of play, and it's not about who you're playing, it's how you're playing, a great Jeff Van Gundy quote. And to play 
hard and to play together. These are all things that just listening to Coach Taylor, they've been preaching, and it's nice when you get it on the floor one night, but again, you know how they're going to feel. It's like they got half the job done. Right. That's exactly the case. So for Cal State Fullerton, they're going to win their third game in conference play. Hawaii is going to fall to one and four in the Big West. But of course, these two teams will get together tomorrow night, same place, same time. After that, Cal State Fullerton gets CSUN. And Hawaii will return home and get the Anteaters for two. A lot on the menu as we wrap up conference play. Near the tail end of January, and we get to February for an additional four weeks. Things riding high for a couple of clubs. UC Irvine, Cal State University of Bakersfield. Closing seconds in this one. And Cal State Fullerton with a sizable advantage because of the productivity from four players led by Trey Max, who's got 23. And, you know, the other thing that can't be underestimated, David, either, is the defensive effort of Fullerton holding Hawaii to 65 points. You know, they were allowing 72, excuse me, 77 in conference. So, you know, that's a good sign for the Titans as well. And then the question remains for Coach Kanai and Hawaii, how do we get this offensive flow back? How do we, how do we figure that? Uh, you know, the point guard situation is one area that, uh, you know, Bales was terrific tonight, looked good. Madut got going late. Webster was great early, has 20 right now, but most of that damage was done in the first half. So just about finding that rhythm and that flow successfully on the road. And then keep in mind for Cal State Fullerton, they're doing a lot of this damage without Wayne Arnold. Did not play tonight, was removed from a game last week for Cal State Fullerton against CSUN. Did not see any action on Sunday. So it's always nice when one guy is removed and another one steps up and then some. Yeah, and that's the depth we talked about at the top of the show as well for both squads. And it was really on display tonight for Fullerton. Yeah, Dr. Bradley off the bench for Cal State Fullerton. Six of 10 from the field and 13 points. And yeah. Cal State Fullerton just going to dribble this thing out, and they should be happy. Having a couple days off to think about it. They've now won back-to-back -back games. They split the two with CSUN, winning the second game, 85-77. And then here tonight, an absolute beating, 83-67 and they shot the lights out. Trey Maddox Jr. with 23, Dante Maddox Jr. with 20, and Cal State Fullerton earns their fourth win of the season here in 2021, taking care of Hawaii, 83-67. And what Coach Taylor may be most pleased about is the 40-minute effort that his team uh, put forth tonight. They started well, intelligent, lead with paint touches, Maddox on the perimeter, Dante Maddox off the bench, and of course, you had the doctor making an appearance, Dr. Bradley stepping up in a major way, making a house call here at Titan Gymnasium. You see the big one, the triple digits with UC Santa Barbara. Ja'Cory McLaughlin went off. He had 21 points right between the eyes of CSUN. 105-58 was the final. Aggies getting their first taste of Big West Conference activity here tonight. And UC San Diego got the better of them. Anteaters win again. What else is new? Cal State University of Bakersfield narrowing things out against the Highlanders at the SRC Arena, 47 to 45. Of course, this is just game one of a back-to-back, -back, and so we're pleasantly surprised to see everyone getting in the look tonight. And speaking of getting into the act, there's Courtney Sweet with one, Trey Maddox Jr. Courtney, take it away. Thanks, guys. I'm just chit-chatting with Trey. First of all, congratulations on the win. Thank Coming you. into tonight, Coach told us he wanted y'all to come out with more energy, and boy, did you. How were you able to dissect that Hawaii defense? Uh, honestly, it was our ball movement. Uh, guys was hitting a wide open man. Guys wasn't holding on the ball too long. And today, I just feel like we hit big shots and hit our, our wide open shots. We know that Coach always preaches to share the basketball. Good things happen. Y'all did that tonight. Another good thing that happened tonight, Dr. Bradley. First of all, one of the coolest names I've ever covered. Yeah. Secondly, yes, <laughs> it was really fun. He brought it tonight to watch the team's excitement. Mm -hmm. What impressed you the most about his game? Oh, his energy. When he came in, the whole game changed. And we all know that Doc didn't play a lot in the beginning of the season, but we all, everybody on the team kept 
telling Doc, like, be ready, be ready, be ready. Because the things that he doesn't practice, if half of y'all seen that, y'all will be, like, mind blown. But Doc is a very impressive kid, so look forward to seeing him more on the floor. Well, I'm telling you, he was ready, and we actually got to see a little bit of that tonight, so we look mm -hmm. forward to tomorrow. Yes, ma'am. Another impressive thing about your team is on any given night, somebody's a leading scorer. Mm -hmm. You tonight, Vincent one night, Tori one night, mm -hmm. Dante. When you have that kind of, you know, that many weapons in your arsenal, how much confidence does that give you? Uh, it gives us a lot of confidence. Uh, Coach Taylor always tells us, like, we should, we should kind of put up 100 points a game with all the scores we got. But now I think the team is coming together. We are starting to learn who different guys' spots are. So now we just hand guys in their spots and they're knocking them down. So honestly, I feel like our offense is coming together now. Okay, it's kind of just you and me. It's a very mm -hmm. quiet gym. Yes, Let's just be real for a minute. We know that you've got scores, but Coach Taylor, defense is really what he cares about. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So how would you assess the way that your team is buying into that defensive philosophy? Um, I think our preparation uh, before the game was very, very coached well by uh, Coach Dunson. Uh, we went over Hawaii defense since the day after the game when we played CSUN. So we've been, we've been knowing kind of what Hawaii is going to run and stuff like that. But everything goes to Coach Dunstan because he prepared us very, very, very well to stop Hawaii's offense because Hawaii has a lot of threats too. So I think we were very prepared for that. You absolutely were. Well, mm -hmm. we talked about go get some rest because I know you got a game tomorrow. We're going to be here. But, you know, congratulations. What a great win. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I appreciate it. You got it. We'll see you tomorrow. Guys, see back tomorrow. up to you. Thank you very much. Trey Maddox with 23 points. Brandon Dunson, the assistant coach, getting some love as well. Bill, final thoughts on this thing. Well, Maddox and Lee were terrific. You get 30 off your bench, Dr. Bradley, Dante Maddox, and you hold your opponent under 39% from the floor. You shoot 52%, 47 for three. That's a good recipe for Fullerton. Straight bullets tonight from Cal State Fullerton. They dominated from the opening get-go. Trey Maddox with 23. Four players in double-digit scoring. That was all Cal State Fullerton. So for Courtney Sweet, Bill Heretta, and our entire ESPN crew, I'm David Gascon, saying so long from Titan Gym here in Fullerton, California, where the Titans win at 83-67 to is the final score. To watch this entire game on replay, as well as the other games on our family of ESPN networks, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Have a good weekend, everyone. So long.